How's it going, everybody? Happy Thursday. That's right, Thursday for Capes and Cows. Why? Because I deleted Thursday's show. <laughs> so we're recording today's so show. And figured put Capes and Cows today. And if I can recover t the today's show, I'll put it on tomorrow. If not, I'll do a solo show. But nonetheless, we have a fix. And we got a good show here today. Got Winston and Chris Carr with me. And we're going to be talking about the fact there's some rumors with the MCU. Uh, some fantastic four news. I didn't get a chance to watch the most recent X-Men 97. I'm sure my two wonderful co-hosts have, so we'll get their thoughts on those. Ma, Kent, Pa, Kent, cast. We got a cast. And there's some other news, man. Zack Snyder was talking about how he thinks James Gunn will do a good job, and he's excited for um, the DCU. And, when we little, and speaking of the DCU and speaking of Superman, they got a, a behind-the-scenes little picture, I think a little video, of the, both David Corn Sweat and Brosnahan together. And last and least, Transformers 1 trailer dropped today. <laughs> terrible. Uh, not, I'm not going to tease it any other way. Terrible. Terrible, terrible trailer. Um, but we'll talk about that. We'll see if my co-hosts agree. If you're brand new to the channel, you've never been to this channel before, subscribe to this channel. You can get us to 200,000 subscribers. We're trying. We're trying hard to get there. And if you are into the UAP phenomenon and you've been interested asking questions about it, we have a brand new channel and we're moments away from 20,000 subscribers over there. So come join us. Thanks. Here we go. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's the show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Capes and Cowls, Chris Carr, Winston A. Marshall, no bookshelves, and we have... I feel so naked. It's so naked <laughs> in know. here. Yeah. I was just thinking that. I know. Mm -hmm. It's nice and... It's clean. It's clean. Look Is that what we're calling it? Sure. Sterile. <laughs> no, I, I, it's sterile. sterile. As I've been, well, I've been talking about it. We talked about it on the show that was supposed to air today. It was such a, and it's such a good show because we talked about like stand up comedy for like 15 minutes. We talked about some of the stuff. We talked a lot about the New York move mm. and about the, the reason for it in general and this whole thing. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to recover the file. I really hope I can because it was a great show. Um, oh, oh, do you have your time machine plugged in? I, I, I now I do today. We had this conversation yeah. when your old computer kicked the bucket. I, I can't feel bad for you now. None of this, well, I thought it was. I thought it was. So, but it wasn't. But <laughs> after it, all the hours we just sat here and tried to sell it, was. Was. <laughs> I thought it was. But anyway, um, speaking of the New York move, for people, the, if you're curious about it, what we did, and somebody yesterday had we had these frames, and somebody got us some of the frames on the on the Amazon wish list. So thank you for that. We have a wish list. Someone, it was someone on Patreon who said, you know, you should start a wish list for the studio. It's great because we're going there in May to set up the actual studio itself. Mm. So, so soon. It's soon. That's Gosh. like tomorrow. Yeah. I know. So we're setting up the studio in May, and then we're going to be moving to in, in June. Um, overall is what it looks like. So going to be fun. Going to be a, a good time. We're excited about it. And people have been really supportive about it, so ready to go. And if you if you want to check out that list, it's uh, it's the first thing you'll see in the comments. Okay, so let's get to some of these topics. This is the first one. All right, let's start with this fart piece. <laughs> uh, Transformers One, the new trailer came out. So on, I guess yesterday's show, myself, Chris, and Kalinowski were talking about how we were just a little hesitant. In the trailer, it was weird because they like launched it in space, which is completely unnecessary after seeing today. Um, and it was like, okay, well, why do they have these voices of Chris Hemsworth, Kegel Mike and Kegel, all these people in this that are stars that you don't need it because the Transformers sell themselves? And there's no Peter Cullen, which anytime I get, I have a chance. Autobots roll out. It's, it's iconic. Yeah. You want that voice. And it's and then someone before the trailer came out on our show said, well, you know, it might be the lead up to it and how he got the voice and how he I was like, OK, great. And that still might be the case. But, man, this tone, as the kids say, is not it. Do you agree? Disagree, Chris? I absolutely agree that this misses the mark. And I, I try to champion for animation all I can. I love it. I think it's such an incredible medium. It's where we first saw Transformers. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is is so subpar. The trailer is all over the place tonally. The the frenemies thing is just mm. weird here. Yeah. And sometimes it's a really great dynamic, you know? X-Men, we love yep. that. We love yep. having, you know, Eric and, and Xavier having this very like love-hate relationship, mostly love. 
this doesn't feel organic. This doesn't make sense. And the jokes in it just feel really played out. And I always get nervous when a trailer does this kind of stuff because it feels like, oh, are these your best moments? Because they are right. not hitting. No. How interesting. Do you, where are you at? You just watched it. Yeah. Um, this, I, I mentioned this before we went live. It felt like. They were making Transformers into a Pixar movie. Yeah. And I, I, I would say the I don't mind the action that they showed that mm-hmm. looked pretty decent, but everything else looked so bad. And I, and I like I have because of my nieces and nephews, I've come around where like I really enjoyed the despicable me and the minions yeah. and all that. At times it felt like watching the minions being like, I have knife hands. Right, like it right. just I I don't It missed the mark. It really did. It did. It's like it's a, it it's Clearly, people making this and Devon Ventura, who's had it for a while too, clearly don't understand the essence of what this property is because you don't take that particular property. I mean, you can still make an, a, a, an animated film for adults and kids and still make it w- w- serious. You know, and it's because look, in the, the Transformers movie, which I love, the one from like 1986, mm-hmm. there's comedic moments in that. There's funny moments in that, but it still it took itself seriously. It would have probably even gone better if this was a situation where it's like you know robot X nine five. I'm not a transformer, but I look up to Optimus, and one day I'll, if that's what you're going for, but to take these very iconic, very serious characters mm-hmm. that can be funny at times, but that's not their main mo. Because like one of the weaker moments in my opinion of the first Transformers. I liked it at the time, but having rewatched it, I'm talking about the Shia LaBeouf ones. Yeah, was like the hiding in plain sight in the backyard. I, oh, where, uh, like, I, bring, I mentioned it all the time. I hate it when he's he's hiding behind a house. Uh, he's a big hey, get off of there. He's a big like, robot. Yeah, he's, <laughs> and nobody and, and the, the, father doesn't, the father doesn't doesn't know that he's bouncing around the house. What are you talking about? It's so stupid. But so you're right, stuff like that. It, and so you know, you know what I'm saying. So if you want to, if you want to other it, where it's a, another character that's looking up to Optimus, and that's who I want to be one day, and then that's where the gag stuff comes in, and it becomes more serious. Almost like the way you you look at um, I know Spider Verse is like funny all the way through, but there's this weird thing where Miles is clearly idolizing like Spider Man, and then eventually finding out he's Peter and all that, and then you can have those serious moments go. It's weird to take again Optimus and Megatron, eternal enemies that only team up because like Unicron shows up, so they don't right. have a choice. But they're not doing it because they're like, well, we're best pals. They're political so use- rivals in the same way that like Magneto and and X. But like- they were at least friends. And that makes it makes right. sense where it's just like we're just having this divide. They, they are mortal enemies, right. Megatron and, and 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 Optimus. So there's no like well, we're, we're leading eh. we're leading up to it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. I just I don't think everything needs an origin story. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Every, when you explain things to death, it just kills everything. Sometimes characters just are diametrically opposed to each other, and, and that's fine. And, Let it happen. And it's okay to do something like so far into the past where you see the, the initial why they're beefing and they have to get to earth and all that stuff and like how they form their crews, but against one another. And in that tone of like how we always, because you're, you're asking the audience you're, and it's like, well, sometimes you want to switch it up, switch up the tone, but you're asking the audience who's like the hardcore fan now to say, Oh yeah, the, 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 what we always knew, we don't need to do that. Let's, let's do something completely new. Like, and they are trying to do Ragnarok with Transformers one from the second they're seeing like that, that's not that's not working and ve- dare I say it played more like Love and Thunder <sighs> yeah well, well you know because yeah. because the, the funny thing is even with like Ragnarok and obviously you see this with Thor and Loki a decent amount but there was always they've always been like enemies but they uh, they're still mm-hmm. brothers and so that like made sense we have never in the history of watching Transformers ever looked no. at Optimus and Megatron to be that. And that's part of the problem. There's maybe a mutual respect in them being mortal enemies, but there's never been any sort of slightly friendly rivalry. It's, I'm going to stop you or I'm going to destroy you. It's not. It's never been, we're cool, we just don't always agree. Right. It's so concerning, though, when it comes to the people who are making these properties. It's like, how do you not like look at this tone and go like it almost makes me feel like how what marvel did right with daredevil and said Mm-mm, this this they're not no this is not going to go well we got to scrap what we're doing right now let's go back to the drawing board let's go back netflix style because that's what the fans really responded to it's it worked we can go back i know we said we're not bringing back karen and foggy let's do that and they retooled it and realized what worked before will could work again so they went that route how do you not look at this and go after that trailer and go, oh, that what it is? It's an it seems to me 
an older studio exec going, oh, that key, Michael Key, is, he's hilarious. And, 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 oh, Chris Hemsworth, he's such a star. People are going to love this. And it's like, what are you talking about? What are you so talking what about? They didn't fix Sonic's teeth. Right. It feels, it's the trailer equivalent of Ugly Sonic. And oh, yeah. I, I just, and this is probably coming off of Three Body Problem, I'm sad that this is what was beamed into space. I'm worried <laughs> that our alien overlords are going to be like, well, shut it wait, down. Wait, wait, wait. Shut it down. Maybe I'm missing something because you guys have mentioned space twice They now. launched this trailer from space. That was the whole story Which, yesterday. What do, what, do, what do you mean? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They, they were in, uh, I, it was it was launched from a satellite in space. They were in space. Who knows? It's just, they were, someone's floating around and pushed a button in space, I think is what it, what what? it ultimately was. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it, it's, a, it's a who cares. It's, it's a really, gimmick. It's a gimmick. And it's a gimmick for something that's not even worth said gimmick. No, that's what Chris is saying. Like, is that what? to where it's yeah, like, this is. Yeah, they're just going to be like, nope. No, turn the ship around, bling blop. Let's go. It's like, like Galactus wouldn't eat us after this. Like, He'd be like, oh, I can't stand the indigestion. Bro, I see you're wearing the Moonfall jacket. This is yeah. exactly where the aliens come in and go, you know what? Screw your Earth. <laughs> like, this That's what I'm is... saying. Yeah, they turn around. They're, they're on their, yeah. they're, they, yeah. they finally go, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to show up. We're going to tell everybody it's time that here's what we're going to do. We're going to enlighten them. What did they just release? Turn it back. No. Go around. Go around. Yeah. Go around. <laughs> we come bearing the cure to cancer. Done. The pure, the world peace. Bumblebee just said what? Time travel. What? What? Yeah. You have knife hands. Leave. <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> we're, we're gone right now. That's it. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's I, look. I'm sure that we'll get some. Uh, we'll get some comments that people like it. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call my good friend PJ Campbell. Because PJ <laughs> Campbell somehow defended this trailer, and I want to really? get—I want to get his point of view. I, I mean, taste I just is get, subjective, I, but it, this it feels. Is. I want to get his point of view. I—I hmm. I, I want to get his I, point I, of view. I, I love PJ. We actually had a very civil argument. All right, you know, before we before we move on from this topic, I have my good friend PJ Campbell calling in. PJ, it's how are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? It's good to hear from you. Same. Uh, as you are the the beacon of positivity is why I, I like to have you on. <laughs> so we got myself, Winston, and Chris Carr on the show. You like this Transformers One trailer? Explain yourself. <laughs> All right, look, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been waiting for a long time for any of these movies to show as much personality as that two minute trailer gave us. Like, look, Michael Bay is the personality in and of himself. He likes blowing things up. It's great. It's fine. But sometimes it's okay for these things to have like a meta self-awareness humor to them. And I think that the TMNT movie last year reminded me that sometimes it's cool to like pull things apart and like look on on the inside. And, you know, it's a trailer that's going to be aimed at kids. And you just know that the people who made this, they love these movies and they're having fun with it down to, you know, even the little jokes about more than meets the eye. There's just something about it that just tells me that there is something much more special underneath the hood of this car. Listen, I like how you present yourself. I think yeah. that it, I think it is a very positive way to look at things. I think that you give the people who are making these movies way too much credit. I think Lorenzo Di Bonaventura has no idea what this IP is. I think he loses loses the essence of the Transformers in general. To combat the point of TMNT, which I liked, they didn't lose the essence of who those turtles were. Also, hold on. Let me let me PJ PJ. Let me talk to you for a second. Let me talk to you, brother. <laughs> Uh, to, to, what's up, man? What's up, what's up, dog? To, to invoke a mutant mayhem when you actually had the creative wherewithal because you know that these that the Ninja Turtles are teenagers, you went and got kids to actually then become that and bring that element to it. That's one thing. To go get Chris Hemsworth and Keegan-Michael Key and Scarlett Johansson and all of these A-listers to come in here and then to make... What feels like I'm teenage Optimus Prime and Megatron and I got knife hands. I've brought this up three times because it's the silliest thing I've heard. I get what you're saying. You know I love your positivity, boy. But like this is not. It. I'm so, it's not it, bro. It's hey, not hey, it. Look, I don't. You know, I I don't begrudge any of you for feeling that way. And I'll say this. I don't necessarily disagree with the A-list casting thing. And that's the thing I've talked about for a long time is I don't always necessarily love that they pump these movies full of A-list mm -hmm. actors. Mm -hmm. I, I'd much rather we do things with interesting voices. I mean, look, Robin Williams was a one-time thing, and everyone's been chasing it ever since Aladdin. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. That's a good point. But, you know, it is what it is. And at the same time, if that's the tone they're going for, you could have done worse. Someone like Hemsworth has proven time and again he's actually very good at this comedic oh, timing thing. I don't disagree with you on that one, but I, I guess just even from the standpoint of when we were to, like – 
to say that there this is the first time it's infused life i then ask you have you not seen bumblebee because that's an instance where you you weren't too heavy-handed with nose, any sort of right. action and on the nose but you still gave the 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 fun origin story of bumblebee where he was still playful but it was serious and it had emotional depth there's nothing about this that makes me feel like there's going to be emotional depth to it it literally feels like we have minionized the transformers Minionized, interesting. I didn't get that from that. And I, I don't particularly like a lot of the stuff from Illumination because that's, mm. you know, that was one of my big things with Mario, to be honest. I thought they minionized that a lot mm. uh, down to the soundtrack choices and stuff like that. Now, granted, maybe it is to your point, like it's been a little while since Bumblebee, too. And mm. so I just feel like I've been waiting a long time for another Transformers movie that actually looked kind of fun. And maybe yeah. I'm just getting, you know. Well, I think Winston, wow, Winston actually, my way. Winston hit it also. What he said uh, before he said it, it felt like they were trying to go for like a Pixar version, right? That of, was more accurate of, yeah. of this. And I, so look, I, I, I wanted to. Get, I knew that you always explain yourself well, and and this is why I, the reason why I wanted to bring you on is that I think that it's also healthy for people to realize you can uh, disagree with people and still have a cordial conversation about it because exactly because I. Think this move, this trailer looked like a pile of farts in space, and it, that was you could be totally space. right, right? You know, yeah, and you could be right too. I hope that I, I, that's the thing. I hope that you're yeah, right. I, honestly, I would, yeah. I would rather you be right. You got it, Chris. Exactly. I, I want this to be good. I want all movies to be good. Even when I see something, I go, oh, that kind of looks like poo to me. I want it to be a good movie because making movies is really hard. Right. I tried yes, so hard to exactly. censor myself. Just... I know. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm so I know proud that of you. people look at, you know, Christian, we've gone, we've done this forever. You've known me a long time and, you know, people love being like, God, you're so optimistic. It's so annoying. It's like, yeah, but you know what? Sometimes it's okay to just look at stuff and be like, I know a lot of people worked on this. Yes, and I will also combat people on that because I'll say if you think PJ is too, uh, too positive, just go on his Twitter. Uh, so. Ah, <laughs> ah, so, all right, brother man, thanks for calling in. Always, man, it was all good right. to talk to you guys. You, I'll see you all soon. All right, but later, man. Bye. Um, and the great PJ Campbell. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so it, it movies, it stinks. Okay, so overall, I'll say I think this trailer stinks. It looks like Chris Carr thinks this tra trailer stinks, and Winston says the same. So, I ask you guys, what do you think? Do you like this trailer? Do you not like this trailer? Do you think, hey, you guys are being too tough on it. Who cares? Let them take one fun one. Maybe it's just geared towards kids, and that's it. That's all they're trying to do. They're just trying to make a kids movie on this one, and they don't really care about anything else. What do you think? Uh, where are they going with this? Where, where, do, they, do they plan to? And I didn't even like the animation that much, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, too. Um, so I want to hear the, the, the thoughts. Make sure you put them in there. We welcome all opinions. All right. Here's the next one. Okay, Superman director James Gunn shares new behind-the-scenes photo with David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan from Mark Cassidy over a comic book movie. To mark Superman Day, James Gunn has taken to social media to share a new photo from the set of his upcoming DCU reboot featuring David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan. Now, arguably the most iconic superhero of all time, made his debut in the pages of Action Comics number 1 on April 18, 1938. And director James Gunn has marked Superman Day with a new behind-the-scenes photo with the set of his upcoming DCU reboot. Fans are hoping for a costume reveal, but Gunn has clearly decided he's going to keep the suit under wraps for as long as possible. Instead, we have a look at Corrin Sweat Brosnahan reading comics alongside the filmmaker. If this is how the actors will look, in character as Clark and Lois at some point in the movie. Maybe. It's possible. But we can't see Clark rocking the backwards cap. We'd say the photo was more likely taken with Corn Sweat and Brosnahan in their own clothes when cameras weren't rolling. He writes, On this day in 1938, the first superhero entered our atmosphere via the imaginations of Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Gunn says, and he gave us someone to believe in, not because of his great physical power, but because of his character and determination to do right no matter what. Happy Superman Day, all of you. Superman will also star Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, Isabella Merced as Hawkeye, Edie Gathagy as Mr. Terrific, Nathan Fillion as Green Lantern, Guy Gardner, and Anthony Carrigan as Metamorpho. More recently, Sarah Simpeo signed on to play Lex, Lex's assistant, 
Eve Tessmacher, and Skylar Gazondo has been cast as Jimmy Olsen. Millie Alcock's Supergirl is also rumored to make her debut ahead of her own Woman of Tomorrow movie, but that's yet to be confirmed. We're not sure how these other superheroes, superheroes will factor into the story, but Gunn has stated that Superman's dual life as Clark Kent and Man of Steel will be explored in the film, suggesting that these characters will be his super friends. Whether they'll be part of an actual team remains to be seen. This is a fun, this is a fun you know, picture. It's this is a really cute IG post. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, uh-huh. me too. And I saw some people giving it. You know, when you're posing for pictures, it's it's a. Uh, it looks like you're desperate. It's like, can anything be fun? It's okay to have fun. I think that's the thing that's wild to me. I, I randomly. Um, this morning, I was just scrolling. Uh, there's for those that are familiar with the the physical fitness trainer Sean T. He did like the insanity workouts and stuff. Oh yeah. He's become like a he's doing bodybuilder competitions now. But he started off as like a personal trainer and a dancer. And people are like all the people that are now fans of him as a bodybuilder. Like, why are you dancing so much? And he's like, because I like to dance. Right. So it's my pay. I'm gonna do what I want. I think. People should be allowed to just have fun and right. show positivity and it not be a thing. Yeah, I also think one of the reasons is it's like it's this goes back to the conversation where you, if you have people who don't like you, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what you do, mm-hmm. they're going to say, oh, that's sad. Because the same person, because I saw Kalinowski go after this person, the same person also gave a, a, a thumbs up to Zack Snyder reading a comic and saying, so it's like, you know, there's it it agendas released to it. So, I, dude, what happened to teams being reserved for sports? I know. Like, it's, it's, I know. Good it's, lord. Okay, Chris, you were gonna say? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say. I mean, if you're a, a comic book fan too, don't you want other people to read physical copies of right. comic books? Wouldn't you see that picture and go, "Oh wow, that might make so many more people actually go to their local comic book shop." Pick up some trades and get into comics. Well, that's why, but it's agenda. It's agenda based. That's 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 what it's about. It's uh, the the post that that person made was was agenda based. I just think yeah. that if it's if it's going to get people to read, if it's going to get people excited about right. a movie, let them be excited. The same way, hey, if you loved that Transformers thing, I love that for you. Right. If you loved this post, I love that for you. Right. If you think it's some sketchy, try hardy thing, maybe jump off social media because that's, that's what, kind that's of the thing. That's what social media go, is. Go, that's go. literally what Instagram yeah. is made for. It's all Ugh. fake. It's an yeah. algorithm of yeah. pick me. It, well, yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's true. And well, do I try? Yes. Right. So that's, hard. that's what it is. It's so hard. But look, it is. I do too. I, but I like the picture overall, and I also like that yeah. James Gunn does these types of things because James Gunn is very, very good with. We mentioned it. I think it was on the show yesterday. He's very good with casting. Mm-hmm. He's very good with music. And inside of the casting, he's very good with actors' performances, and he's very mm-hmm. good with actors in general. Actors trust him. Actors like to talk to him. And most actors, like you, you, you. I mean, look at the Dave Bautista stuff. Like Dave Bautista was ready to lay down in front of a train for the guy. You know, right. everything he's done. People like it. Most people who work with James Gunn um, seem like he's very. They, they, he protects them. It becomes mm. very, oh, Captain, my captain, with all of his cast members. Yes, and it seems like this is the type of stuff. Why? Because he's like, hey, you know what would be fun? If we, like, well, I, have, I have the comics. Uh, why don't you, David, s- sit in the front there, and we'll do, you hold the comic, and Rachel, you sit there, and we'll, and we'll just, like, just, just casually uh, read uh, it. On top of the, the, the fact, I saw the one line where it said, oh, we don't see Clark wearing a backwards hat. There have been plenty of times where Clark's been out here playing baseball yep. with with, yeah. with Bruce and everybody, and, and he has done that. But let alone if that's not the case, and it really just is David Corns, but there's something about that that's so casual of, like, guys, we're just chilling and whatever. I think that's the point. I think that's the point of this post, right? It's just like, look, we're just, we're, we're kicking back. We're having a good time shooting this thing. We're reading some Superman comics. We're talking about it we're we're in it we're in the thick of it right now and you guys should get excited would you prefer that they had it and, and like david courts was like looking at james he's like yeah check this out right, right here right like that that <laughs> seems staged right is that, they're just reading he's like, just, yeah just reading the book so but either do you way i want to fall down the rabbit hole though of like hashtag not my clark Capgate and just like pictures of corn sweat just wearing baseball caps and people being like never yeah but I no. I, I think that but that was that was comic book movie who was just saying we're not sure it, yeah. it's unlikely that sure. he's got the backwards hat I don't think they yeah, were taking no a shot of them. yeah yeah they, I just know there's a person in this world who exists who's probably and is like, saying that no. yeah yeah um, okay so always. we've got we've got more stuff with Superman and more casting that we'll get into in just a moment but I do want to tell you guys I have to thank you so much for being on, supportive of this show. 
I know that you guys have been giving love to Chris when she's been on the show in the comment Thank section. Um, uh, obviously, Winston and Corey always get the love. It's the same Thank with, you. with Roxy and Brad and Mike and staff. So everything you do, it's really, really appreciated. And it's why I also tell you, because people ask all the time how to support the show. And I tell you about our sponsors. And I'm very excited to tell you about our sponsors right now. Here you go. I'll tell you a little bit more about cuts. Okay. So, it, and I've always told you guys that, you know, when you go and you check these things out, they're all things that I love. And I've talked about it many times over that I only have things on the show that I dig. So for you guys, most guys, I think, wear a T-shirt every day of their lives if they could. I mean, I know I would. The problem is that most shirts are not acceptable to wear. You can't wear them at work. You can't wear, wear them out like on a date. Well, but today's sponsors, Cuts, they've changed it. Cuts T-shirts are high quality, wrinkle free, and so buttery soft that you can look like you're dressing up even when you're dressing down. Yeah, wrinkle free, and it's true. I've had these things. I love these things. I'm I'm on the move, so when I'm I'm like, oh no, my shirt's gonna be wrinkled. Nope. In a limited time, you can save money. You can refine the dress code. We gotta head on over to CutsClothing.com and use that code Big Thing for twenty percent off. So go to CutsClothing.com and use that code Big Thing. It's so good. They like they've changed the t-shirt game. It's tons of simple and they're sophisticated items. The bottom stretch, they fit joggers. They, they they look way better than the khakis and they're 1000 times more comfortable. So for a limited time, again, our listeners will get 20% off of your entire order. We got to use that code big thing at checkout 20% off your order at cutsclothing.com. Big thing. Support our show and tell them that we sent you experience the perfect blend of style and comfort with cuts clothing. All right, you know what stinks? When you're stuck in a loop of rent payments, you're just watching your money vanish into thin air. It's the worst. It's time to turn the rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. How do you do that? That is where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Doesn't matter. Even if you're rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards, it's got your back. They're going to mail the check for you. It's like basically having a personal rent paying assistant. It's the best. Every month you pay your rent and you watch the points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points towards a flight or a hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash big thing. That is join B-I-L-T.com slash big thing. Let's talk about some habits because you guys know you got some habits and there's nothing better than beating a bad habit with a good habit. And we've talked about fume before you guys you guys know we've talked about fume uh, we've we've had fume on and we're glad that they are back it's great and mark riley is the one who's really been talking this thing up and i can't wait for him to, to talk about it even more so on the show um when he's on for uap and he just talking about how flavorful it was better than he thought it feels very fresh and it's like a refreshing herbal tea but if it was vapor uh it, it was it, you can look at it like sticky soda it's got non it's 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 really good it's it's well weighted it's perfectly balanced it's extremely fun to fidget with and it really look at the, the the wood itself it's it's great you can start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash big thing and getting the journey pack today fume is giving listeners to the show 10 percent off when they use that code big thing to help make starting the good habit much easier because it's you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit that you're free to enjoy and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts. It's great. They use flavored air instead of vapor. The fume is completely, completely natural, by the way, instead of electronics. And there's no, this is the reason why I decided people are like, well, why, why would you, why would you get involved with something like this? Why? Because they don't use harmful chemicals. They use delicious flavors. And that's why I got involved. Fume works. They're great. So thank you again to Fume for sponsoring the show. All right. I want to thank both Built Cuts Clothing and, of course, Fume for joining the show here today. Really appreciate it. Um, I put it in the description each and every time. I pin it to the comments. If you want to help us, and the best way to do it is get something cool for yourself. That's why I always, always 
partner up with people that I think that you guys are going to like. And I think I've been right. I think I've been right. I think you guys like it. All right. Here, stick it. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, I just had a funny thought, like, since we're talking about the base, like the baseball cap and the fact that what if we get a Twilight Thundercrack, like, Super Friends baseball game? <gasps> so Guy Gardner, like, trying to, like, catch a Superman, like, home run and everything. I, I don't know why. Now, that I would be not. funny. <laughs> That would be funny. Jay Scott would... Campbell, I need you to do this as a variant cover. Scott, please listen to me. Please do this right now. Maybe it's like, if not in the movie, maybe it's like, uh, you remember how before Ragnarok they did the short of like Thor living with like with his, with, roommate. with his roommate? If like maybe this was like a teaser of that, of just Superman and the Super Friends just playing baseball, that'd be fun. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there's a, lot to, <laughs> there's a lot to see with this movie in general. And they're start. it looks like... As they're filming, they've also locked up their full cast, it seems like, because they just cast both Ma Kent and Pa Kent, and here it is. Again, Mark Cassidy, comic book movie. On the heels of yesterday's Jonathan Pa Kent casting news, we now know who's going to play Man of Steel's beloved mother, Martha Kent, in James Gunn's Superman. Yesterday, we got the word that Constantine actor Pruitt Taylor Vince will play Jonathan Pa Kent in James Gunn's Superman, and we now know who has been cast as his beloved wife and Clark's mother. The Wrap is reporting that Neva Howell has joined the cast of the upcoming DCU reboot as Martha Ma Kent. Howell has appeared in numerous films and TV projects over the course of her career, but her most recent credits include Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Long Haul, Steven Soderbergh's Logan Lucky, and My Fellow Americans. Martha Kent was first played on the big screen by Phyllis Thaxter in Richard Donner's Superman the Movie and Eva Marie Saint taking over for Brian Singer's Superman Returns in 2006. Zack Snyder went on a younger take with Man of Steel with Diane Lane. And then, of course, we got Pa Kent yesterday. So we see Pruitt Taylor Vince there as Pa Kent. So both those actors cast. It's funny because we were literally on the show yesterday talking about this. And yeah. Mike had said, I hope we don't get a, a big no, you know, name celebrity actress. I hope we just get a really good character actress like, like this guy. And, it, and, and not, we did. not five minutes later. So what do you think Mike about the casting? Mike manifested this. Yes. Good job, Mike. I, <laughs> I love it. I am not as familiar with Ms. Howe's work as I was with uh, Pruitt uh, mm -hmm. Taylor Vince's. But she, if you go to her IMDb, again, another journeyman actor. Somebody who's been in tons of stuff and working for decades. Right. And that's what you love to see in this stuff. You love to see an actor get their day in mm -hmm. the sun. It's what we all hope will one day happen I for know. each of us. Yeah. And it's so lovely to see this. I'm really excited to see their dynamic because you got to sell that. Ma and Pa are just so deeply in love mm -hmm. because they not only foster Clark's view on humanity, but his idealism, his views on romance, though the things that kind of make Lois seem a little, oh, I don't know, I, she's she's an intense, powerful woman, and I don't know if she even likes me because his parents are so deeply, deeply in love and so beautifully communicative. So you got to make sure that chemistry is there. And like we were talking about with James Gunn, I'm sure it is because he's really great at casting these kind of dynamics. You, you, you raise an interesting question. I, I can talk about the casting. I think it's great. And I think having unknowns, or relatively speaking, like obviously Pruitt's done a lot of work, and we talked about what, what's her name again. I'm sorry, um, Neva Howell. Neva Howell. Is so she it? obviously has worked for a very long time as well. Um, but like you said, we're not talking about A-listers here, uh, anything like that. So th that's a nice touch. My question is, who would you say are the best parents in comic books? <gasps> In comic books, yeah. in general, like oh. just period. I mean, I I was always a big fan of those original Ma, Ma and Pa Kent from the Donner Superman. Mm. That's what they were. I uh, didn't even mean like actors. I just mean just period, just just the characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. So the characters were like how how that that to me it's just because I that was my first. I, I grew up with those that Superman. That was mm -hmm. my that was to this day still hard for me to, as we were talking yesterday with those Raimi movies how so many people hold those Raimi Spider-Man movies to their chest and I understand it that's the way I hold those Donner Superman movies right so totally get it when Pa Ken says to him he's just such a good dad like what he mm. the, what the way that he explains him and his mom same same thing and the relationship that they have so I I have a special place in my heart for those two. sure yeah. I, I think for me it's either more Aunt May, but Aunt May slash Uncle Ben, mm -hmm. or or Alfred, honestly, his father figure. Like he, sure. at, that, at that at that point, Bruce was young enough. He really just kind of idealized yeah. his parents, obviously. Yeah. But that's a, a huge tragedy. But for essentially, what is his godfather to yeah. still remain as professional as he is, but really be a father to Bruce in what is probably one of the most tragic, uh, you know, backstories that we've seen. I I just I was just curious, you guys. Oh yeah. 
Kent's definitely Aunt May and Uncle Ben I love. I, I would give it up, too, for Miles Morales' folks. I yeah. love his parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his parents mm-hmm. are great, too. The only reason I, for me I still would take the Kent's in general, doesn't matter which iteration of the actors, is just because it just it also is a reflection of just parenting in general, right? Mm. Because, like, imagine if Clark would have wound up in somebody's hands in a, well, no, that's why I was. That's why I was curious. 100%. And right? it's like, and it's like, imagine just imagine, like he, and as you said very well before that, he just not only just with love, just in general of perception of life and how to be responsible with his powers. And the same way that Ben was with with Peter, right? But he, they just, they shaped him. They mm-hmm. shaped him into the man that he became. And because of what they shaped and his vision of uh, or projection mm. uh, is the reason why we got Superman. And it could have been. Imagine he would have well, went to the wrong person. That's yeah. why Red Sun is yeah, such an interesting Sun, is yeah. such an interesting storyline yeah. is because then you're you're dealing with it. Let alone, um, you know, at least the animated version of Flashpoint. You have a situation where the American government gets to the site before the Kents do, and so Clark is just locked away. It's similar to what they did yeah, in Sasha the Flash Cow, movie. Yeah. They lock him away. What does that do to you right. psychologically yeah. that you were raised in a, essentially a lab your You're entire a kid. life? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so it's a good question, though. Um, what do you guys think? Do you like this casting? Do you think this is the way to go? I think it is. I think the panel thinks it is, but maybe you have a different opinion. Do you think it should have been somebody who was more known, or are you excited to see what this cast is going to turn out? Put your comments in there. Let us know. All right, moving on. Okay, so this was a big topic of conversation on the internet a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and I am pretty sure if you go back and check the videotape, as Warner Wolf would say, that is an old reference. That is, uh, I didn't even get it. You won't get that. <laughs> uh, that I'll get Ed Harrell will get that. So, but anyway, we mentioned this on the show when everybody was losing their minds over the Julia Garner Silver Surfer, and we didn't say we were necessarily on board with it right away, but we said we were open to see what they were going to do because. We didn't know if Norrin Rad was going to be in it or not. It's very possible that they could put both of them in there. Well, there's a new rumor in there that says just that. In comicbookmovie.com, the Fantastic Four is rumored to introduce Norrin Rad alongside Julia Garner's Silver Surfer. We recently got word that Julia Garner had been cast as the Shalabal version of the Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four, but the MCU reboot will reportedly also introduce Norrin Rad. This is from Mark Cassidy again. Seems like Lakeith Stanfield may have let the cat out of the bag after all. In one of the most talked about casting announcements in recent memory, we learned that Julia Garner had joined the cast of Marvel Studios of Fantastic Four as a female take on the Silver Surfer. Garner will play the Shalabelle version of the character, however, which led to speculation that the original Sentinel of the Spaceways might also appear. Now, Daniel Rickman is reporting that Norrin Rad will indeed be introduced alongside Shalabal in the MCU reboot. Has the role been cast? In a since-deleted social media post, Lakeith Stanfield commented on Garner's casting. He commented on Garner's casting by saying, thought it was going to me, but IG. In the original Marvel Comics continuity, Shalabal was the empress of the planet Zen La and was the first love of Norrin Rad. When Galactus came to devour the planet, Rad volunteers to become his herald in exchange for sparring Zen La. This is all a lot of stuff, guys. Uh, later, when Franklin Richards took over as the new Galactus, there was a character named Ha Ha Ha. And no, I'm just kidding. He <laughs> imbued Shala with the same cosmic powers and allowed her to serve as a twin herald alongside Rad. It remains to be seen if the movie will take inspiration from the comics when it comes to these characters, but another rumor claimed that there will be some connection between Franklin's and Galactus in the film. Um, anyway, so this is, why, this is why I say when we were talking about this a couple weeks ago, you're allowed to have your opinions on if they do this, I don't know if it's the right move, but to throw your fist down and say, I can't believe they're doing this. When you don't know yet and you haven't seen the movie, you're allowed to say that, though, after the movie. If you feel like, okay, it didn't work, they were clearly just doing this because they wanted to make a statement, and then you're allowed to say that if you feel that way after you see the film. But if you haven't seen it yet and you don't know the story, just wait. What, what do you think? Hashtag not my silver surfer. Yeah. No. <laughs> he looks like a silver Ken doll, but it has to be somebody with a penis. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of different characters in here. And I would love to have both of these characters in the Marvel Universe. It does feel a little cart before the horse, though, of talking about Franklin and all this other stuff of, I understand things get 
particularly weird when it comes to the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. But these are a lot of characters who we we haven't even properly met the first family yet. Right. So some of this casting news, I'm just like, whoa, slow down. Okay, <laughs> give, me, give me a minute to meet everybody, yes, and then we can go there. Wouldn't you say that it's kind of the same thing, the same potential concern with Superman? With sure. When you have, granted, we know who Superman is, and we know Lois, but we know, we know the Fantastic Four. But All his super friends being there. Right. I so, remember when that came out, too. I was like, whoa, everybody's it's a lot. here? That's a lot. For our first Superman movie? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I think having those two characters together, though, makes sense. They're from the mm-hmm. same planet. They were yeah. involved with each other. It makes sense to me. I, I think know. it's a smart move to put Norn Rad in there also. And also, it's okay to introduce another Silver Surfer because the question is, and I don't remember, I and it's this is why this is not fair to Marvel if it's the case, and you guys can correct me in the comments. I feel like the Julia Garner thing was more so a leak and not an official announcement because if Marvel announced it first, Julia Garner cast as... And then didn't announce that also Norrin Rand. And they were opening themselves up. Not that it's right or wrong, but they're opening themselves up for the amount of weight. Why are you going with that route right away? But if it was leaked, and they've always had the plan to have Norrin Rand alongside with her, then it's like hold back for a second and let them let let's see what the story is. Because like I said, in, in that conversation, we still might feel the same where you look and you're like, I don't know. The way that they handled it seemed like they were more so just kind of trying to squeeze check boxes as opposed to tell the story and that is a concern but the flip side is you could go that's a pretty great story that they just told there and that, that's that's why you gotta you know go and open minded this is the part where I genuinely hate the 24 hour news cycle I hate social media because I miss the days now I sound like an old man but I miss the days genuinely where like back you, in my day you like originally heard the the, the the top three or four build in a movie who's assigned as a director and that's all you heard until you got a trailer and until the movie came out you weren't just being inundated with stuff constantly so I think on top of the fact because Coy brought this up when we discussed uh, the, the Julia Garner casting he was like most likely what they're doing because where have the Fantastic Four been in this entire time like why have right. they not been involved in things they're probably from one of the other multiverses, and then they end up in the the verse that we're dealing with. So in that multiverse, probably Julia's uh, version of the surfer mm-hmm. is the main surfer. And then once they get to RMCU, then Norn Rad is the main surfer there, and that's what they're going for. Which, again, we don't know the story. We don't know how it's going to play out, so it could be fine. I understand and we were all on the same page. It's a risk when Marvel has lost a lot of trust right now mm-hmm. to immediately feel like you're shoehorning something. But that's literally why I wish social media would just be quiet for a while, just and we could just movie. just let things happen yeah. first, and then, like you said, how many times has somebody been making something you're like that doesn't look like it's going to be tasty at all, and then you try you go that was actually delicious. Yeah, we were discussing this on the show yesterday with with Mike, and I said, and this is what I respect about Mike when, and I do the same thing. It's like when you you can say a trailer looks like garbage. You, let's lose Transformers one, okay? I think that trailer is atrocious, one of the worst trailers I've seen in a while. But I will not go into that movie with, like, there's no way you can change my mind. Because if it's a good movie, I'm going to come out and go, man, that trailer didn't do that movie justice. That was a really cool movie. Here's another example. I just saw Abigail, which is a vampire movie. And I'm like, that's not necessarily for me. I got a kick out of that movie. Mm. I really, I was like, okay, here we go. It's the vampire sitting in a chair and she's haunting. The, I've seen this a billion times. It's a funny movie. It's a funny movie. It is. You'd be able to take it. Also, I know you don't normally like the yeah, scary movies, but is it like a? It's a horror comedy. It's a horror comedy. I can deal with horror comedy. It's a horror yeah, comedy, and there's like there's like you know there's some bloody, like really gory stuff, but it's it's funny. Dan Stevens is really funny. Melissa Barrera is good in it. Um, Catherine Newton's fantastic in it. There's a lot of there's a lot of really. Kevin Durant is also really. Kevin good in Durant it. is in the basketball players in it. No, Durant. Dur- that's his name. Kevin uh, Durant or Durant? Is it Durant? Well, Kevin Durant, Durant is the basketball Wait, I player. With his a name. I always messed him up. It's Kevin Durant. Okay. Kevin Durant. <laughs> I, I always like, say I always say Durant and Durant. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to focus I had a on moment the of coaching of like I don't know a lot about sport. But. Kevin Durant. Durant. So I'm off, I'm off by I'm off by a T. Durant. Durant. Same thing. At the time, yeah. my brain just yeah. went in a whole yeah. different direction. I, I used to do it also, but I, that's why because I used to say wait T D T D. He's well because you you saw bottoms, didn't you? 
No, I never saw it. Oh, dude, you Super would love polite. Bottoms. But, like, Marshawn Lynch is in it. And so, like, okay. that was completely random. I was like, what is he? But he's been on his whole side quest era yeah. right now. And he's, so he's, he's, he's so fun. He was on that improv show with Will Arnett. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. Oh. I did see that. I, I love that show yeah, so much. Funny. The Christmas special. Yeah. Oh. But, um, but, yeah, I just, I think, to your point, I thought Renfield looking at the trailer was mm-hmm. going to be great and putting Nicholas yeah. Holt and Nicholas Cage. I thought this is going to be awesome. And then it just really was not what it like. It so you, you never know. And then you see a bad trailer. And then the movie that like you were mentioning about Abigail ends up being great. So Transformers one to go back to that. It might be good. But what I was just given, I don't like that. Right. So but it's, gotta, well, but it seemed to, you, to your point here, you haven't seen a trailer for this yet. And you're allowed to say, I don't think that looks good. I don't like that particular choice. I think that's always fair to say. I, I, what I, that's, and I always, when I'm looking at comments back and forth, especially on Twitter, on taking both sides of it. On the one side, when someone says, "I do," if if someone says, if a comment, if they say a comment along the lines of, "Oh, I wish they wouldn't have went with this Silver Surfer first because I don't necessarily for Julia Garner. I don't. I would have liked to seen." You know, what's his name? Norrin. 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 I would rather see Norrin ran first. It's the Silver Surfer I was excited to see. I feel like they're kind of placating, and I don't, and I, it's just that's not for me, right? I don't, I'm not excited about it. And then someone says, well, that's because you don't like women. And it's like, no, that's not what that person is saying. They're saying that they would have rather seen Norrin Rand because they, that's what they wanted to do, and their personal opinion was that that's what they were doing there. And people will right away say, no, what are you, well, you're just saying because you're putting a woman in there that you don't, that you don't enjoy, and, and, to the flip side of that, then there are clearly those people who do that. Sure. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's one of those things that, for me, it was, but there's multiple heralds of Galactus. Yes. So we're just doing a different one. So it was a complete non-story to me of, oh, right. they're going in a different direction. Oh, right. they're going to bring her in. That's really neat. Right. Because we've also seen the movies deviate from the comics tremendously. I mean, look right. at what they did with Scrolls. you know? Right. Yes. So, But I guess that's the problem. You did that with the Scrolls. You did that with Taskmaster. You did that with a number of characters that those choices end up being terrible yeah. choices. And, and, and the also the problem that's is that you're true. not in phase one, two, and three anymore. In phase sure. one, two, and three, there's a lot more forgiving of the fan base. Take your shots. Do what you have to do. Because, and, and, Fan bases in general have become very divided. Mm. So, and unfortunately, in a big business, in big business, when you're tr- when you're trying to make, we've talked about it, the billion dollar dart. Mm-hmm. Everybody's trying to do that, especially with these movies. You can't just placate to one audience. You have to. And I'm not saying this is. I'm just saying in general. Sure. Like you can't placate to one. So when the when you're one side of the audience, whether you like that audience or not. You want them to buy your tickets when they're like, well, wait a minute. I wanted to see this character. You've got to do. I think that if they're doing it this way, mm-hmm. this is a way that you do it. Mm-hmm. If this is indeed the way that they're doing it, this is the way that you do it. You say, shut up. We're putting this woman in here because she's a tremendous she's an actress. Amazing actress. She's a, she's a, di- this is a different silver surfer, as you were saying. And guess what? You're still getting your dude. You're still getting the guy. We're going to bring him into the, they're together and they're going to be powerful together. If they're doing it that way from the start, I think that's a smart play. We said as much on the, 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 the last time, but same thing. Haven't seen the movie yet. I don't know. I like yeah. it though. It's the Hannah Montana. It's yeah. the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want. That's yeah. what we want. I mean, look, I, the one thing that I want, and I know that this is not MCU directly, but the one thing that I want is to just see Feige and whoever he brings aboard cook again and seeing that we've done that with X-Men 97 and specifically knowing that Feige really cares about these Fox properties badly. Like, mm-hmm. he likes all of Marvel, but he's been very clear that the X-Men and the Fantastic Four have a very special place Started in his heart. Started his career with X-Men. So let's... let's Try that is... Really. that Right, yeah. yeah. But that is where I'm like, okay, let's genuinely give him a moment to just re... Like, if he goes and takes the two properties he cares the most about and those get messed up, then we can have a completely different conversation. This is the only time where I'm genuinely like, we, we got to give him just some time right. to cook. So what do we think about the Lakeith Stanfield part of it? Do you think, is he, is he actually going to be great? Be, is he, do you think that he's it's... He's wonderful. He would be he's absolutely great, great. So especially because Norman Rand being... Is, is always just very ethereal. He's He you would know? be perfect, but in, but but it's it's less about that, my question is more so like do we think that he's actually cast because he deleted that post um <sighs> see i don't go full marvel conspiracy i don't know i'm yeah. not i don't have my little board at home but why did he delete the post if it's i mean somebody from marvel could have been like oh, it's it's what? also po- <laughs> right. it's also possible like, if you want to go conspiracy i know you say you don't if it's like between lakeith and one other person he's like oh i thought i was gonna do it well, well, with right. the, 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 then all of a sudden they're like 
you mother. F- <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a power play to be like, oh, yeah. I do fine. love the idea of, no, I'm just going to say I was supposed to get it and see how everyone and reacts. See how it works. <laughs> that, the old that agent is a play. powerful move. That's all yeah. the, it's the agent play. That's yeah. what the agents do. Yeah. James Gunn talked about it, I think, on Rosenbaum's shows. What the agents do is be like, oh, you know who's up? You know who was up for, uh, for Superman? My client, so and so. Don't tell him I told you that. And then they put that in there, and it's like he went in for, the person went in for an audition. Yeah. But then all the trades and all the websites and YouTube channels pick it up, and now that person who you didn't know their name yesterday, you know it today. And that's how you start to market your clients. It's a smart way to do it, and it's the same way like, oh, I thought I was going to get it. <laughs> right? I got to change my strategy. I know, for real. I'm doing it all wrong. Yeah. I know, for real. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think about all this? Do you think that this is set? Do you think we're going to get two surfers? And do you agree with Chris? Because I think it's a valid concern that is it too much to put all of these different characters in there? Go ahead, put your comments in there. Before we move on to our few, we have a few more stories, but before we do it, got to tell you about AG1 and Rocket Money. Love them both. Here it is. All right, guys. Let's talk about AG1. You guys know I love AG1. If you've been listening to my show, you've heard me talk about them, and I've been drinking them for about two years now, and I love it. Never been a vitamins guy. I've told you that. I take it all one shot, AG1. I put it in a water bottle. I shake it up. I'm good to go. I recommend AG1 to my friends. I recommend AG1 to my family, everybody. AG1 is a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and maintains high quality standards. You guys know they've been with us for a while because you guys know too. You've all been checking them out and everybody who's been signing up to AG1 says the same thing. It's changed your energy. It's changed how you approach things in a day. You're smiling more running around the place and you're sleeping better. I know. AG1 is the supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. Rocket Money, I've been telling you guys about Rocket Money forever because there's a lot of times that you forget about these subscriptions and you either pay twice for it, you didn't realize it, you sign up for a thing and you're like, oh, I'll do that first free month and then it's gone. Your money's gone every month. Did Rocket Money do what you wanted them to do for you when you signed up? Because it did it for me. I had all these subscriptions and I was like, oh, and it lists it out and it says, don't do that. You don't need these. It tells you how much money you have uh, that you've spent in the month. It tells you, it, it gives you your credit score. It gives everything. I mean, Rocket Money for me is the way to go. It's a personal finance app. Um, yeah, right. And yeah, and it finds and it cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps lower your bills, which is the best. So you can grow your savings because Rocket Money has, has over 5 million users and it's saved a total of 500 million saving members up to $740 a year. So don't waste money. Cancel your unwanted subscription and go on over to rocketmoney.com slash big thing. Rocketmoney.com slash big thing. Thank you to AG1 and Rocket Money. I just got somebody yesterday saying that uh, they just signed up for AG1. I was so excited to hear that because it works wonders, man. Love AG1. And Rocket Money keeps me every single time. It's like, hey, you got to... You have to make sure that you are you have this balance you got to pay. You have this. You spent this money this week, this month, and also those canceled subscriptions. That's what's the best. So AG1 Rocket Money, links are in the description. All of our wonderful sponsors, links are in the description, pinned comment as well. Okay, moving on. Let's stay with the Fantastic Four. Joseph Quinn, Stranger Things fame. The Fantastic Four star Joseph Quinn on following Chris Evans calls it a very different Marvel movie. The Fantastic Four star Joseph Quinn has opened up following in the footsteps of Chris Evans and shares his thoughts on everything from the reboot's familiar dynamic to how it fits into the wider MCU. Josh Wilding over Comic Book Movie writes, Fantastic Four was released in 20... Fantastic Four was released in 2005 with a sequel, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, following two years later. That was where the franchise ended until 2015 when 20th Century Fox rebooted it to disastrous results. Next up is Marvel Studios of Fantastic Four, which is a new adventure set in the MCU in an alternate reality. 
So there you go. We're ready to confirm. See? Joseph Quinn has been cast as the MCU's Johnny Storm, meaning he has to follow in the footsteps of Chris Evans, who before being cast as Captain America, flamed up as the Human Torch. And Quinn says, I remember really enjoying Chris Evans' performance as Johnny in the previous films, and it felt like this would be a really exciting opportunity. I was absolutely signed up. The Stranger Things star tells Entertainment Weekly. He added that he didn't even have Evans in mind while auditioning because you're going to make it your own. He did acknowledge that it's big boots to fill. He said, I, ha he, I had a talk with the director, and it was very clear with the kind of people who they were attaching to it what they were trying to do with it. There are aspects of it that are very much a singular thing and its own thing. Working with Vanessa, Pedro, Evan, they're really consummate pros and brilliant in everything they're in. So I'm really looking forward to establishing this dynamic with them and with Matt Shankman's guidance. Resurrecting the Fantastic Four franchise won't be easy, particularly with the audience's condition to expect disappointment from Marvel's first family in theaters. With so much talk lately of superhero fatigue, is Quinn worried that moviegoers will reject this latest take? I think that with the story of the Fantastic Four, it feels like we want to get this right. There are aspects of it that are very different to other Marvel films. That felt very compelling to me. And again, going back to who's involved, Matt, of course, the director, I think he's brilliant. And the cast, I've read it, and the script is brilliant. It's really brilliant. I'm delighted to have this opportunity. Superhero movies are movies about people, and if we're invested in the people and the characters and the peril and the spectacle, then that's why people go to the theaters to watch films. We're not just in a penny. We're in for a pound with this one. We're going to go for it. Question. Yeah? Is Because I haven't heard any uh, interviews with Quinn. Is Quinn British? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That, th there's, there's, too, there's too much just like little things in his language that I was like, he sounds British as hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. using the penny for a pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not. That is. That, I know that. I know the Stranger, phrase. You don't watch Stranger Things. I do, but I just. He, he's, well, he he's doesn't. A, have, he doesn't have the the accent. Yeah. That's he's what I'm saying. Nice I just he's never heard him in an dialect. interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's wonderful. He's really good. It. He's perfect for this role. He's absolutely. You don't like him? No, I really oh, okay. like it. But before before Joseph Quinn was on my radar, I really wanted Joe Carey from Stranger Things as well. Oh yeah. I was like, oh, Steve Harrington would crush this. Both of them would. Both of them are good. But Joseph Quinn is fabulous. Really good. He's a wonderful actor. He has young Robert Downey Jr. vibes about his like style of acting. Sure, sure. I love his take on this. I love it. He's said the right things for sure. And he's also, what what he said about, I think not just superhero movies, I think these movies in general, and I will always, at least for the time being, use Godzilla Minus One as the example of how big IP movies and movies about anything where there's a big, huge lizard or superheroes if you give them a story and you give them characters and real emotions attached to them people will care and I, I don't buy into the whole well sometimes it works sometimes that doesn't I mean sure when it came to like Godzilla and Kong yeah I, I, I said as much you don't need I don't need to care about any of the other characters and you don't need to give me a real because this is literally just a UFC fight that's all it is it's just a big fight Sure. And it was great. It was it was fun. It was fun. It was it, it, they delivered on what they promised. Exactly. I wanted WWE Kaiju and they did it. And that's what they did. This movie is not that. Fantastic Four is not that. So I want to invest in these characters and it is it's gotta be look, X Men and Fantastic Four, they are carrying the weight of the future of MCU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about these comments? It at first felt very PR. Mm -hmm. I'm doing exactly what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to say. But I love once we get to the point of these are movies about people. It goes back to that amazing idea of, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, of right. anyone can wear the mask, you could wear the mask. It's about the person who's wearing it. And all of the superhero fixins, that's just, you know, a cherry on top of your Sunday here. You want to be invested in this person. And in this dynamic in particular, that familial dynamic is so intrinsically tied to who these characters are, how they operate, mm -hmm. the superhero choices they make, the disastrous choices they make later on as characters too if we start going down that darker road with them so making sure that they all click as a unit is so important and i love that he's invested in who the character is not just that he can do the flame on right i mean i think it's brilliant it's um, brilliant it's, it's brilliant. absolutely brilliant it's absolutely brilliant um no but oh I, my gosh, I marvel hire us we're so good at we're accents. so good we're so good at accents um uh, you know that you you just asked for it what? No, to come at me for that? That's fine. I don't. We have I don't a lot care. of UK viewers. No, no, I know. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm also sorry to my husband, who's an actual dialect coach, right. who's like Christine. No, no, no. It, it did really Cut depend. I gotta, I gotta really be in the mindset. Like, I mean, uh, you know, this is easy. I can lean into this pretty quick. But like, yeah. sometimes the British shit is just. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's something we're stop talking it. about. So that's how we were talking about. Stop it. <laughs> what you do? Um, stop it. But 
Chris hit the nail on the head with the the concept of I think why I got so offended back in the day when Scorsese was like these aren't this isn't cinema this isn't film. True film is just getting at the core of human behavior uh, about family problems, about life problems, about mental health stuff, all that kind of stuff, and then you put the setting around it. And that's really what makes cinema. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. So you make the argument about The Godfather. That's really just a story about people and families and their relationships and then putting it in a mob scenario. You could say that about the Titanic. That's, you know, a, a love story between two people and then putting it in the middle of a disaster film. Mm -hmm. So it just it yeah. just depends on what yeah. you're talking about. I never I never got offended. I, I, I agree with all of your points, but I never got offended <laughs> with Scorsese because I always he look at this. Well, but I, another way to look at it, I always look at it like my grandfather. Right. If he turned on me listening to hip hop, he wouldn't like my hip hop music. If he would like like some of the music from like when he was around that I was listening to in the mm -hmm. 80s and the 90s, he wouldn't like and wouldn't think it was real music. Right. He was about 40, 50 years older than me or whatever he was. Right. And it's like, so. Sure, but if you're an artist and then you kind of just poo poo what other artists do. I know. Just because it's not to your taste I, I, is a, a bummer. I, but here, but here's the thing when it comes to Scorsese is that, again, you're not wrong. In the, but he is now at this place where he's 80 or whatever he is. Sure. And it's like he doesn't care about all this stuff, too, because it's like I, he's set in his ways. Mm -hmm. he's, he's on his porch doing whatever. He was, he, and he's making his movies, and he's going to do a Sinatra biopic, and that's all he cares about. So to him, he's got a specific idea of what film is. And we don't have to agree with them, right? But I don't think you never you're never going to change his mind. No, no, no. I I I 100 get that. I thought music with your grandfather is yeah. a great example. At the end of the day, what is at the core of what is actually music? You're you're telling some sort of tale. You're you're expressing emotions yeah. through lyrics and through and through melodies. And if it does all of those things, you may not like how country sounds. You may not like how hip hop sounds. Right. You may not like how pop music sounds. But if it's hitting those elements, then you you can't deny that it is at core what it is. So that was the only reason I ever I, I get what you're saying yeah. with him being an old man. But it's just like if we're still telling those stories now, the moments that we don't. So like looking at the Fantastic Four reboot that came out in 2015, that movie was a tragedy for a number of different reasons, yeah. and it didn't cover any of the bases of film of trying to tell a human story. It was just kind of like. <laughs> like just Look at all these attractive people with superpowers. <laughs> Go get them. Go out there. I know. Anyway, it's fine. so I have it, knife hands. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic Four. It's 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 gonna be here before you know it. It's like twenty twenty five. It's really I think May of twenty twenty five. It's it's gonna be here a year from now. Yeah, wow. quick. I mean that's why you have all these movies now that are being. The Superman, Fantastic Four, all the 2025 movies, you're getting more and more news about them and you're hearing more conversation about them because 2025 is going to be a massive year, not just for comic book movie films, but in general. There's so many movies that were supposed to come out in 2024 because the strikes got shifted into 2025. So you're going to have – it's going to be one of the biggest move, movie years like ever, like ever. So this is one of them. We'll see how it does. This is also one of the reasons why I think it was a valid question to say like, you know, are you nervous – at that point, like, where are we going to be with 2025? Are we going to be, like, back in the – because before the pandemic, you could have those four or five billion-dollar movies in the summer, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody was going to the theater every week to see it. It's before the streaming boom really took off. Mm -hmm. You know, Netflix was around, but, this, but you couldn't – you didn't have as much access to everything and all these different shows. So because of all these movies, will there be more hits or because there's so many movies – Will there be more misses? I'm really worried that studios are going to really play it safe with what they give us because they lost so much money. They lost tons of money during these strikes. And so I'm really nervous about what they are going to bet on. I'm hoping we're going to have this really fun boom renaissance of, oh, my gosh, we invest in this really cool indie flick. We love what A24 was doing with, like, renegade horror on a string shoe budget. Let's do that, even though that's not my genre of choice. Mm. Hell yeah, A24. I hope that we have really clever, thoughtful superhero films because Disney is saying, hey, quality over quantity. But we do know in 2025 what we're getting, though. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm worried like, those choices are still safe when they, the execution comes okay, through. Okay, but listen to the movies that we have okay. coming out in 2025. I'm just going to name some of them pop out. I'll probably leave some out that people will say, oh, you forgot about this one. But the ones that I think that will have interest and that could do well mm. and that could there could be a huge boom, this is just January. Mm. Paddington. In Peru, it's going to do very well. Um, Mickey 17 is already getting a lot of Is that of the love. horror film that, with that, Mickey Mouse? No, but no, it is the uh, new Jun, uh, Junho Bong um, 
directed film with Robert Pattinson, and it's like he's mm. and Robert Pattinson is like a, a clone that uh, keeps getting killed over and over again, but one of them survives, and then there's two of them. Mm. So it's that is one that people have been talking about a lot, and that's just January alone, right? So mm -hmm. then in February, and this is where you would see, this is where you start to see the SAG and the strike stuff happening because. Captain America Brave New World comes out February 14th. Mm -hmm. When was the last time a Marvel movie came out in February, right? Uh, it's been a minute. No. Uh, oh, uh, Quantumania. Was that February? Well, yeah, but that's also, that was right after pandemic, right? But was, was, it, was it February when it came out? I thought it was. I think you might be right, but it's like, but it still didn't didn't do it no. justice. No. So the Smurfs movie is another Why? one. There's um, another one? There's another one. Hey, if you love Smurfs, okay. Yeah, right. I uh, think that's the Ryan Coogler vi vampire film, isn't it, in March? Okay, then there's a vampire movie for Coogler in March. There's the untitled Disney movie, March 7th. There is uh, Snow White. Minecraft. That's Minecraft in April. Then there's an untitled Disney film in April. There's a movie called Michael. There's an untitled Warner Brothers movie in April. And then May 2nd, Thunderbolts. And then you've got Megan 2.0, and then you got another Untitled <laughs> Warner Brothers movie. Then you got Mission Impossible, uh, the final one. Then another Untitled Warner Brothers movie. That's just May. Then June is Ballerina. That got pushed back, right? Ilio comes out in June. You've, D Disney and Warner Brothers are going head to head a, a bunch of times already. Just in June, Warner Brothers again in June, June twentieth. June twenty seventh. You, wait, you missed you and you missed uh, How to Train Your Dragon the How live to train action. Your, li live action How to Train Your Dragons also in June. Black Phone two untitled Sony Marvel live action whatever that is on June twenty seventh. July twenty twenty five Jurassic World uh, with an untitled Disney film right next to it. Superman comes out July eleventh. The remake of Naked Gun July fifteenth. <laughs> wow. F Fantastic Four July twenty fifth. August first. The Bad Guys two, untitled Warner Brothers event. Uh, something called Vicious, Paul Thomas Anderson movie, Mercy, untitled Disney film. That's August. That's just August. Uh, and then there's an, and in September, you get a horror movie from New Line. You get a DreamWorks animation film. And then the new Saw 11 comes out, Dirty, Dance, uh, Dirty Dancing sequel sometime in summer. October, The Bride, uh, untitled animated Ang Avatar film, untitled Blumhouse of film. Uh, an event film and untitled Warner Brothers film. And then right now in November, Blade, David, untitled Warner Brothers, Wicked, Part 2, and Zootopia 2. And then December 2025, Jeez. December 2025, you have Avatar 3, SpongeBob movie, The Exceptional Santa Claus, New Exorcist movie, potentially Star Trek 4. So that's... Sure. I think we're talking about two separate things too, though, because yeah. I was like, oh, these are the things that I think that'll get greenlit. When I hear this, though, and it's all the untitled Bloomhouse, untitled yeah, yeah, Bloomhouse, yeah. that's the, like, hey, we can do some horror for a low budget. Right. Mm -hmm. When I hear live-action Disney remakes, I also think these are executives saying, hey, you know what would be good? Because so far, I haven't loved a lot of the live-action mm -hmm. remakes. Mm -hmm. Cinderella? I think that was wonderful. That, that was, was really good. well done. Maleficent? Maleficent. I enjoyed mm -hmm. the first one. Second one didn't really work for me. Like you um, Lion King was like, when they did the remake of Psycho, it was a shot for shot kind of thing yeah. <laughs> um, that I didn't understand why it was happening. But hey, it was a popular a film dollars. that made a ton of movies. But I guess money. that's my point, right? Mm -hmm. Is that so I'm talking more so because the box office has, I thought this year was going to be a big box office juggernaut of a, mm. of a year. But then sure. they had to move, move things that mm. moved around. And because everyone's like, oh, they're only putting one Marvel movie out, but they're putting like four or five out next year. So it's not like they've changed a lot of the thought. The, qu the question is, because we haven't had a year like 2025 since before the pandemic with that many. That's very true. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm going at here is the question is, because we're not in 2018, we're not in 2017, we do have streaming now, with all of those movies coming out and people choosing when they're going to see movies, will those movies, will they all hit the way that they want to hit? Will, will the box office spike? Or are we going to see a lot of disappointing box office numbers? I think so because... You think so what? I think that we will hit the box office properly. Okay. And I think because what a lot of these studios are only now realizing, which is why they've been pushing all these ad tier versions of their streaming services, they understand they've oversaturated the market. Mm -hmm. And you've even with your ad version, you are about to see... In my opinion, a number of people go, I, I can't afford to have HBO Max and Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and Paramount Plus. And so they're going to pick one or two and that will free up some money for them to do other things in life, period. But then to go, 
bro, Superman and Blade and, you know, How to Train Your Dragon, they're all coming out, and I love all those franchises. I gotta go see, like, I think that that is still reserved for that, and I think that that will happen. You'll see more A-list type situations. I don't think that you're gonna get a... What was the name of the thing? The the, the little red card that, that everybody had. Stubbs? Movie pass. Oh, the movie yeah. pass. Movie pass. I don't think movie pass will ever make a. But but the idea weren't of like they, a, though weren't they trying to come back? They were. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which but, is wild. But you yeah. Like, to your point though too, like my Regal, my Regal Unlimited, mm-hmm. that is such a better investment than all of those streaming services, honestly. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I'll go see a movie like twice a week. Mm-hmm. That sounds awesome, and I don't have to buy the snacks. I don't have to do any of that stuff. I can just go see a movie and get in and get out. If it's not the usual production that buying a single movie ticket tends to be. Right. right? Of it's like, this is a date now, or it's a night out with the kids or your nephews or whatever you're doing. When you have that subscription, you just go. But also, staying home, that's where all my stuff is. That's right. where my dogs are. And it's not where horrible theater goers are. Right. It's, it's gotten worse. That's what you're dealing it with. It's gotten worse. worse. It's yeah. people talking and answering phones, phones straight yeah. up fact, in the middle. The fact that there were people online that straight up said, well, if you don't like people answering the phones anymore, then stop going to movies. What are you talking about? It's a gen- I, I, I'll sound like an old man. I think it's a generational thing. It definitely is. I think it's generational. If, I'm telling you right now, if you turn your phone on in the movies, you're wrong. You are. It, it's literally... <laughs> Why they have in the beginning of the screens, you're probably not seeing it because you're on your phone. <laughs> it says, please turn your phones off because I, it's not proper etiquette. I got one exception for you, and it's not with phones. The one exception I will give to you, and I, and I highly recommend this for folks, whether you go see another, like a, if Jordan Peele puts out like another Get Out, something like The Blackening, there is nothing more entertaining than going to a black film and letting black people just be in the audience while it happens, like during the blackening. But that's ex- that. But that's, that's reacting, a, it, right? That's and that's, reacting to well, that's not right, on your exactly, phone. not on your phone. That's the only. Yeah. But, but normally you would, other than like the occasional laugh or something like that, or like oh, you yeah, don't you don't want people talking. That's also the difference yeah. between going to white church and black church. No, no, I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The blackening was so fun because there's yeah. moments where like they're like answer these questions or we'll kill you right. to prove your blackness. The second verse. Yeah, exactly. The second verse that was. Hilarious. The fact that you had, uh, it was like, what? I finished the jingle. Oh, 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 Riley. Literally every black person in the theater, auto parts. Like, at the, like, right. But that's, but they're asking you to basically do that. Yeah. Right. Right. So that, that's a difference as it's opposed like to. It's the same thing as when uh, it did the Avengers and somebody in the theater yelled, say it. Yeah. That's, you yes. want that moment. Yes. My, I have told this story before. <laughs> it is my favorite ever reaction I've ever heard, heard in a movie theater. <laughs> I was, it was the first, it was uh, Rise, of, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, that's the first one. Right? Okay. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and you guys, have, you haven't seen it? I have, yeah. You have seen the it, The okay. Franco one. The yeah? Franco one, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't remember, somebody, I don't know if it was Steph or who hadn't seen it, but Rise of the Planet of the Apes, um, and so there's a there's a scene when Caesar first talks, mm-hmm. and he says, no, right? And he takes this thing, and the first time he talks, and this black dude goes, damn! Bro, I got one for you. <laughs> My favorite is the first time we went to go see Get Out. Um, we were there. And the one that gets me the most, he goes to find the pictures of Rose with all the different black people. And you had this random black dude go, oh, shit, they got Jamal and Jamel and LaQuisha. Yo, you better get out. Yeah, <laughs> Just, right. Everybody in the theater yeah, lost. So, but, that's, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about this. And then your bright screen. Mm-hmm. And then behind you, and I'm, I, I say something. I, I, I say can you please put your phone down? The good news is I don't go to a lot of. I, I only go to. You press go to a lot of screenings now, yeah. And most, m- most, I'd say ninety nine percent of the time, you don't have to deal with that in press screenings because they all feel the same that we do, and they're for yeah. work. Um, but when you go to regular screenings, it's incredible how like people have just lost the common decency when it comes to the theater. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, last story, because I know you guys got to go. Here is the, uh, this is, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to talk about it. X-Men 97. The newest episode came out following one of the, one of the arguably best episodes of Marvel television, and they follow it up, and I have not seen it yet, so all I will ask both of you is, a lot of times when you see shows like this, whether Game of Thrones or whatever it might be, and you have a Red Wedding episode, the next episode is very hard to keep up with. Does it keep up? It does. This what this did feel like a little break, though, which was so needed. 
Especially when you watch the previous, previously on X Men of oh my gosh, this was all horrible. Oh yeah, my I gosh. guess I got to watch the intro. People really got mad at me for not watching that intro. Well, <laughs> and like Winston pointed out last week too, the intro gives you insight into what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. One of the most heartbreaking things this week, and this isn't a major spoiler because it's in the actual introduction here, mm-hmm. is. Gambit's not in the opening sequence anymore. Mm-hmm. That's where Nightcrawler comes mm-hmm. in. He gets replaced by Nightcrawler now, yeah. Which was a mixed bag for me of, oh, yeah, he's going to be on the show more. Oh, wait, no, Remy. But they've, they've been doing this from the start because I actually have already started re-watching the previous episodes. And in the very first episode, even though we're acknowledging that Professor X isn't there anymore, um, he's in the opening title yeah. credits. But then once you get to the end of episode one and Magneto goes, he left me, you're my X-Men now. The next episode forward, Magneto was the one there instead of Professor X. So they they really have been using from start to finish with these episodes, feeding you so much story, so much lore, t- tipping their hat to things. And this new episode, I think, was brilliant because this picks up. It gives us some more new story. I won't get into it because I don't think we're really doing a spoiler no, thing right, right now. Yeah. I haven't seen it. But we are. But you do. You do have the part two. Of what was originally Storm story, uh, the episode before, in episode four, I guess. And so we wrap up her story as well as another story that we're telling at the same time. So I, I think what is being done so expertly is the pacing. I don't think we would have been able to handle whatever the next step is in the story mm-hmm. here if we immediately was like, okay, well, Gambit's gone, and now what? All I right. think you needed to give us a second to catch our breath. In the same way that when we're watching Endgame and and Black Widow gets thrown off the cliff, you don't then immediately follow Clint on his way back to Earth. You you cut to something else right. and then let him deal with his pain when right. he shows back up. Right. I think that's what we needed. That's cool. Absolutely. I'm excited to see it, and I'm glad that it that it delivered and people were because that you know that was going to be everybody was going to be on the edge of their seats for that one. I was, I was mad at myself last night because oh I went and saw that movie and then I was going to come home rewind for a little bit. But I turned on the news and I was watching the news for a little bit, and I was like, ah, I'm gonna go to sleep. Uh, <laughs> after I was watching the news, but I was, but I, as I was going to bed, I was like, oh crap, I should have watched X-Men 97, I completely forgot about it. Um, but I have a Shogun, a Shogun update. Ooh. I still haven't watched it. <laughs> um, no, but the, but the update is that I actually, because I was on the lost episode that you most likely will never see, unless I can find a way to find it, with Roxy and Brett, Roxy was had mentioned that people have been comparing Shogun a little bit to Outlander in a in a, in a way with the love story, oh, okay. and and I said, well, if that's if that's the pitch, my wife is a major Outlander fan. Oh, interesting. I said I couldn't get through it. Oh, she loves Outlander. It's oh. like it's like her favorite show. And you so, still haven't watched Severance, have you? I've seen Severance. Long oh, time oh okay. I ju- I just f- finally sat down and watched. I love that show. Wait, se- wait, Severance. Yeah, Adam Severance. Scott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Severance. Yes, I, I always get yeah. that one and the, the one that everyone else watched that I didn't watch. The one that the Succession. Was the oh, I didn't watch Succession. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't Severance I watched. But I pitched it to my wife last night throughout because of Outlander. I said, look, I'm going to start watching this. I already told the audience I'm going to just watch it and do watch alongs, you know, and put the footage in because I want to see it. But I heard that there's like an Outlander type thing, you know, love story in there too. Do you want to give it a shot? And she's like, and she looks, she's like, all right. She's like, I like the historical dramas. Like, well, that's what this is. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh. So we looked at the, I showed her the, the thing. And we're going to watch episode one tonight. Okay. And then if she doesn't like it, then I want to watch the rest on, on uh, you know, do watch along, whatever it is. Okay. Too. So anyway, long episode, but a good episode. So I want to thank you guys for joining us here today. As always, I definitely want to thank our sponsors. I can't thank you enough for people when you send me those DMs and you tell me that you got yourself something. Like, I'm not bullshitting you. Like when it comes to this show staying on the air, it's because of stuff like that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank my panel here today, starting with Chris Carr. Where can I find you? Oh, guys, you can find me on Instagram. It's Chris Carr. You can also follow my studio, Speak Friend Studio, where we talk about voice acting, dialect coaching. That's not with me. It's with an actual dialect coach who knows what they're doing. And I've got a great podcast with Amy Newman. It's called Two Filthy Casuals. We talk about fandoms, especially ones that we don't know. And we have somebody come on and explain them to us so we can enter into a fandom without judgment. I think you guys would like it. Check it out. Winston? Wow. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. No, I really like that. Um, you can find me at the Swaggy Blurred uh, on all the different platforms and whatnot. I've really been pushing uh, my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to everybody. We're chugging along. I think we should probably hit 2,500 uh, by the end of the weekend, which is awesome. Because uh, that, yeah. I, what I ended up gaining like 200 subscribers in the last awesome. like week, which has been cool. Awesome. Um, 
a lot of stuff going on there. I've been doing my X-Men reviews. Um, I am actually re also reviving my Patreon, and what I'm going to be doing is on the road to Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm actually going, I'm re-watching all of the Fox uh, Marvel properties. So because we know that we've heard that Jennifer Garner is going to be in there, we heard all these various Fox Universe characters will be there. I'm going to go through each every individual movie, Watch along on the Patreon, but then I will put the uh, review slash reaction. I've seen them all before, but I'll put that on my YouTube channel. So come over and say what's up and hang out with me. Appreciate it. All right, guys. And as always, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do it. Help us get to 200,000. That's it. That's what we got. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Thank you to both Chris and Winston for being here today. And thank you to you guys. If I can't find, if I can't find the file. For the show, I'm probably going to do a standalone show with myself tomorrow. So we'll see. Thanks once again, and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. When you've been rewatching the movies, have you like found you enjoy them more now, or that you dislike them more now? Oh, that's great. Okay.